God understands everything you're going through God understands that you need a right now breakthrough God understands when your friends forsake you God understands when your family misunderstands you He knows and He cares when you're down and in despair Don't you worry child God understands I tell you He knows and He cares Don't you worry no God understands when you feel like giving up Ooh. God understands when you're sad because you don't feel loved God understands why you cry the very tears that you cry Understands, said he knows. When you're down, he'll pick you up. Don't worry, don't you do. Don't you worry, God understands. Thank you. God understands all the pain you feel inside. Every hurt and every pain Every tear that
is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be so glad in it. Let me say uh, what an amazing day today is. I sense that the Lord is favoring you richly and greatly. Would you do me a favor? Would you hit that share button and invite as many people as you can uh, into this virtual worship experience, this Bible study? I believe it's going to radically change their life forever. It's entitled Taking Your Happiness into Your Own Hands. Uh, in Psalm 144 and verse number 15, very powerful declaration. The Bible says, happy are the people whose God is the Lord. I, I would open by saying to every one of you that being happy is a daily decision. It's, it's just like it is no different than developing any other beneficial habit. Um, you've got to internalize it, uh, which requires you to be constantly committed to it. That you have to be so engaged uh, in your own happiness that you align everything in your life uh, to produce that particular outcome. And so you have to intentionally make the decision to be and live in a happy state and in a happy head space. Countless numbers of people uh, live in days filled with anxiety, tension, turmoil, and frustration unnecessarily. But unfortunately, they will continue to do so until they make the decision and the declaration to just simply live happy. It's amazing to me. There are some people, have you ever noticed those people, they tend to uh, seem to flow through life with this relentless sense of happiness through the tough times, they're unfazed, they're undisturbed. And you wonder to yourself, does anything bother them? Does anything disturb them? Because they seem to be on this constant, uh, I like to call it this euphoric high. Uh, they, they seem to have this unexplainable and unapologetic optimistic viewpoint. No matter how dire the circumstance appears, no matter how bad, every indicator says that their circumstance is somehow they rise above uh, the viewpoint of the majority and, and they see reason to be optimistic that things are going to um, eventually turn very favorably for their life. And so happiness, ladies and gentlemen, it is a matter of perspective. It is a matter of perspective, but it is also a matter of conscious effort. Uh, it means that I get up absolutely every single day. And even, um, even I have to rehearse my declaration to be in a happy state midway the day because there are some things uh, that will abruptly show up that have the uh, objective to knock you off kilter and to disrupt uh, your emotional stance at the moment, but you have to keep in mind that your happiness is a matter of perspective. It's a matter of conscious effort, and it's a matter of self-awareness. Uh, true happiness is an achieved state. Have you ever met anybody like that? And like, you're tripping because they're not tripping. Have you ever been more worried about somebody's situation than they seem to be? Have you ever started crying over somebody else's circumstance and they're sitting in the corner smiling like, wow, you got, they're handing you tissue um, and, and you thought your job or your role in this episode was to console them and to make them feel better. But the truth of the matter is happiness is this internal achieved, st achieved state. Your personal happiness is nobody else's responsibility. Um, the truth of the matter is there are a whole lot of you who are uh, angry 
have misguided anger towards certain people uh, because they didn't do what you thought they could do or should do in order to make you happy. But the reality of it is um, your happiness is your own responsibility. Because if you keep living life thinking it is somebody else's responsibility or their role um, to make you happy, then you are very unrealistic in your thinking. As much as you want to do for people, as much as you want to be there for them, as, as, as often as you want to uh, be their savior and swoop in and save the day, uh, you are actually uh, contributing to their to the enablement of their victim status. You are not empowering them to be strong enough to develop their own sense of satisfaction within themselves. The reality of it is there are people who are watching me now who understand what I mean when I say for a lot of people, happiness seems to be the ultimate yet most elusive of goals. It's my intent to be happy, uh, but how to get there escapes me. It seems as if when I'm getting pretty close to it, um, it dissipates. Because happiness is more a state of mind than an emotion. It's a, it's a mentality. It's a, again, a perspective. It is a vantage point. It is, it is the lens through which you look, observe, assess, analyze absolutely every circumstance and situation in your life. Hear me, happiness doesn't have to be chased it merely has to be chosen. I wonder if you survey your life in the last few decisions or choices that you had to make in your life, could you even phantom that within your power, within your own will, you are the deciding factor as to how happy you're going to be, or rather if you're going to be happy at all. So happy people are happy by choice, and not by circumstance. Happiness is up to you and it always has been. Again, you and I are the deciding factor whether you are going to be happy. Let me make this statement to you and I say it to as many people as I often get the chance to say it to. You can be as happy as you make up your mind to be. Let me say that to you again, because that felt good to me. You can be as happy as you make up your mind to be. And so why is it that when happiness is a matter of my own choice, it is a matter of my perspective, it is a matter of me making the conscious effort uh, to constantly desire and position my life to be in a happy state. Why does it seem to always be so elusive. There are a few reasons that many people are struggling to get to this happy place. Um, one of the reasons is, is they are comparing themselves to other people. Uh, sometimes you find yourself chasing after things, not even because you really want it, but because you feel like you should have it simply because somebody else has it. I, I, I'm not happy because I'm not married yet. I, I'm I, I'm not happy. I can't be happy because I don't have any kids yet. No, there's no way I could be happy because the rules dictate in order for me to be happy, I have to have this status or, or, or this career or this kind of salary. And the truth of the matter is you are suppressing your ability to be happy within yourself or based on who you are or what God has created you to be because you're so busy comparing yourself to everybody else. The Bible teaches us that when you compare yourself to others in so doing, you are not wise. Hear me, happiness is not defined by any circumstance, condition, or person. Stop comparing yourself to other people. You're trying to do what they do to be happy, uh, but that might not be your path. That may not be God's intention for you. What sense does it make for me to keep comparing myself to you when God has a unique spot for me? God has something 
uh, very particular for me and for me to enjoy, but I can't be happy a lot of the times uh, when I look back even in my own life, when I look back at earlier seasons and chapters, I figured out that happiness seemed to be the most elusive and it seemed like I could never get a handle on it because I was so inundated and so consumed by comparing myself to other people. If I get a car like them, I'll be happy. If I move in the neighborhood they live in, I'm going to be happy when that could not be further from the truth. Let me just spare you some time of crying and being incredibly frustrated. Trust me, the quickest way for you to get to a place where you are happy and you have a sense of self-satisfaction is to resign yourself from comparing you to anybody else. Now, here's, here's where most people don't really understand um, the basis of real happiness. Happiness is the exercise of living every moment of your life, hear this, in a state of gratitude. Mm. Uh, if you live your life every single day in a state of gratitude, then the gravity and the gross weight of life will not be able to have the kind of effect on your mind or your internal imagery as it intends to have. Because the apostle says, in whatever state I find myself in, therewith will I be content. See, because when you live every day in a state of gratitude, you say, God, I thank you for this $2. There's somebody that only has one. There's somebody that has none. I can't sit around and say, well, this is only $2. This, this, is, the, this is all I have. No, there's somebody who has less than you. And so when you learn how to develop a very regimented system and instinct of gratitude, no matter where you are in life, no matter what life is showing you or throwing you, you learn how to be happy because it means I'm exercising, living absolutely every single moment of my life in a state of gratitude. Let me say this to you. Being happy is something that each of us determines. It is not something that we find outside of ourselves. It is within us and our choice exclusively. You are going to be real angry at yourself when you go back and look at how much time you've wasted trying to extract happiness um, from others when the whole time it's self-generated. So stop thinking that I got to get with him because if I get with him, he's going to make me happy. No, no, no. No, if you're not happy with you, chances are I'm not going to be happy with you. You don't connect with people to alleviate your misery or your unhappy or to make you happy. No, it doesn't work that way. You have to pray and say, God, heal me, make me whole mentally, spiritually, emotionally in every aspect of my life. So watch this. I don't connect to people and transfer my misery onto them. Now, there are some things that you can initiate right now to get you closer to your happy state. Number one, you gotta start forgiving those who hurt you. Um, because the, the longer you withhold your forgiveness, um, the longer you occupy this unhealthy emotional state and stance. Truth is, all you gotta do um, is realize that life is short. It comes and it goes. You gotta learn how to forgive people. And watch this, your forgiveness of them cannot be predicated on their apology to you. Um, you have to decide that whether they apologize or not, I'm going to empty my heart of it. I'm going to release you out of my spirit and my mind. I'm going to release you out of my emotional space because how much more of your life are you going to let somebody who's no longer in your life rob you of, waiting on them to come back and say they're sorry. Some people are so uh, immature. Some people are so ignorant. They will never come back and say I'm sorry. 
and it's been having you handcuffed in this miserable state for longer than you care to admit to anybody. So my word to you is that if you're going to be happy or get closer uh, to this place of happiness, then you have to forgive those who hurt you. Number two, you got to put peace of mind first. I'm not going to bed rattled. Uh, it, it takes a degree of discipline, uh, but I got to put my peace of mind first. I've got to learn how to get up in peace. I've got to go to bed in peace. I've got to learn that at the end of every day, I've got to reset. I've got to recalibrate. I've got to refocus my mind. And I will never do that as long as I'm steadily taking on unnecessary clutter um, that I don't have the capacity to process, nor do I have the, the capacity to cope with it. I have to put my peace of mind first. I, can, I can't think clearly as long as I am juggling everybody else's issues all the time. And if you are not careful, all you will be is you will become relegated to being the handler of everybody else's chaos while you yourself never experience the kind of peace of mind necessary to rejuvenate you and give you the kind of perspective you need to manage your life. The Bible says that God, he says, I will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your, what? Your mind stayed on God. And so my mind can be in all these other directions and I can't keep giving people the power to pull my thoughts and shift my focus. If I keep my mind on God, then he promises that he would keep me in perfect peace. Number three, I've got to resolve myself to understanding that I simply cannot control everything. Now that's going to be hard for a lot of you because it was hard for me because, you know, I had this Superman complex. I could do anything. Hit me with it. I got it. Put it on me. I got it. And you live long enough. You keep letting people put stuff on you. You'll start having medication. <laughs> uh, you'll start having mandatory uh, rest that you have to have now because you overworked yourself. You're uh, you're taking on too much mentally, but you got to resolve yourself to the fact, hey, I cannot control everything. And you have to stop letting people make you feel like you need to, or you got to control everything. No, God is the only one that has the power to control absolutely everything that is happening in your life. People ask me all the time, why, why are you so happy? Why do you, why do you always seem like you're up? And that you're above everything, that you don't let the circumstance of life get you down. That's exactly why, because I have the power not to let it. The Bible says this, he says, let not your heart be troubled, which means that he wouldn't tell me don't let it if I didn't have the power not to let it. In other words, I have, I am the determining factor in whatever emotional state I land in. See, there are some people who are dead set on getting on your nerves. There is nothing that aggravates people than when they're trying to get on your nerves and you won't let them. You know what that feels like. Oh, they're, they're trying to make you feel sad or bad about yourself and you're smiling the whole way through it because I am in charge of my emotional gauge and my emotional um, thermostat. You got to get up every day and say, if I don't have anything but God, I got enough. Doesn't matter how much you lost. Let me tell you, if you got God, you got enough to start all over again. What is it going to take for you to realize that it is you who have the power to change how life is going, to change how you are feeling about your life, but it happens when you make up your mind to be the happiest that you have ever been because I told you before, you can be as happy as you make up your mind that you are going to be. Uh, maybe you're watching me uh, today and you need salvation. I want to tell you that God wants to save you now. There's no question about that. If you need salvation, come now. If you're a backslider, nobody has convinced you that, that you're a backslider. You know, come on back. God still wants you back. The rest of your life really is the best of your life. Come on back. Or maybe you're watching and say, I need a church home. I need a pastor. I need to be surrounded by worshipers who are lifting up the name of Jesus Christ. And if that's you today, my brother, my sister, I want to tell you about a God that will 
welcome you and receive you now. And if you're looking for a church home, all you got to do is contact us right there at the bottom of the screen. There's an email address there. If you're receiving Jesus Christ, if you're restoring your relationship or you are planning your membership uh, in this church or you are uh, joining our global cyber sanctuary, they will give you all the necessary information to help you facilitate that decision. Well, I am happy about your decision on this day. We're getting ready to honor the Lord in our giving. It's giving time. Literally, it's our global time of giving. Uh, and people always ask me, why are you so happy about giving? Because giving is the way I receive. There is no receiving where there is no giving. That if you sow, you're going to reap. You can't reap if you do not sow. It's an awfully ridiculous sight for me to go outside in my backyard and say, come up, apple tree, or expect the apple tree to come up, but I haven't put any apple seed in the ground. My expectation is predicated on my investment. If I put apple seed in the ground, then I now have the right to have an expectation that God is going to produce a supernatural harvest and supernatural fruit in my life. Those of you who are watching today, I want you to prepare the Lord's tithe. Return it unto the Lord. God has prospered you. And I, since the last time we've seen each other, I know God has prospered you and blessed you and increased you. And so whatever God has put in your hand, a tenth of that belongs right back in the house of God. It is a it, it is an investment in a continual cycle of blessing. Give and it shall be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. God will cause men to give unto your bosom, but the tithe is non-negotiable. Return that tithe into the house of the Lord. This day, I'm going to ask as many people as can. I want you to get that corporate seed, prepare that $42 seed. If by chance this is your first time tuning in, corporate seed is a $42 seed based on the book of Job. When God said to Job that God gave Job double than he had before. It's a seed of restoration. And we believe in this season, God knows we need God to restore to us multiple fashion. So I want you to get that $42 seed. If you're going to do more, God bless you. Certainly, if you do it, it would be much appreciated. If you can't do the 42, you're going you're gonna to do the best you can. You can. You say, Pastor, I'm going to do the very best I can. I'm investing in the work of Jesus Christ. And I know God's going to bless me real good. Look on the bottom of your screen. All the giving mechanisms are right there. Uh, whatever one is the most convenient for you, I want you to give now. If you want to write a check, mail it in. The mailing address is right there at the bottom of the screen as well. We're going to pray over it and receive it. And watch God prosper you in a super, super natural way. Those of you who are giving, who are sowing in my love offering, you know how I do. I pray for you absolutely every single day. Uh, and I want you to know how appreciative I am. Bible says you can't give a prophet a cool glass of water and God not richly bless you. So I pronounce a prophetic blessing upon the life of every one of you that are so kind and so generous. You don't have to be, but I appreciate you for doing so. Uh, so I'm out of time for now. I will see you next time. Don't forget to share this with as many people as you can. Until then, God bless you real much.